Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our D programming language series. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about control flow. So control flow are things like our if, else if, and else conditional statements in which we're evaluating some condition to see if it's true or false, and then allow a certain route of execution in our program to execute. This is how we make decisions in computer science. So if you're coming from a background of say Java, C++, or any other programming language, you're going to find that these are very similar. But D has two cool features that I'm going to show you related to switch and case statements and just a little safety with our if conditional statements that you might not be used to having in your programming language. So again, just another great reason to do D. And I'll also show you briefly ternary expressions, which are also available and sometimes handy in D. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a quick look at control flow in the D programming language. So let's go ahead and dive into our code here and do an example here. And for this one, I'm going to use the double equal to test for equality between these expressions here. So one, is it equal to or equivalent to one here? And I'll write out a statement if that's true, just so we can print it out here. And we see that this condition is true. So we execute the block of code between the curly braces. Now we can do things in D like in other programming languages where if we just have one statement to execute, we can omit the curly braces. Uh, but I don't like to do that. I like to leave the blocks in personally. That's probably a good style. That's a preferred style that I would encourage you to use. Okay, so that's the if statement. Let's go ahead and take a look at else. So if this condition is not true for some reason, then we would say else. And I could write line here. One is not equal to one. And in D, we use the exclamation part point here and the equal sign to say not equal. So again, I'll go ahead and evaluate this and we'll see that one is indeed still equivalent to one. Let's go ahead and change our condition here. I'm gonna change this to two and let's go ahead and change all of our numbers here. So our printout makes sense. And I'll run this and we can indeed see the logic. This time the path that is taken is just this block of code here. Okay, so that should work as you expect, just like in many other programming languages. And then finally, we can have else if blocks, and we can have as many of these as we want to evaluate some other condition here. So let's go ahead and try something like this. So if one is greater than two, okay, let's go ahead and try this here. If, how about one is equal to two? And then if that is not true, then well, one must be less than two here. And we'll go ahead and write out our conditions again. Testing for one is equal to two. And we've sort of covered our bases here. And this will fall into this final block here where one is less than two. So you sort of get the idea of what we can do here. Now, again, if you're newer to programming, we're just going to execute this first block of code here. Okay, so that should be pretty familiar to most of our programmers. Now, let me go ahead and show you one of the cool things in the deep programming language that you can do with your if statements. And I really shouldn't say it's much of a feature as more of a way to let you write better code. So what I'm going to do this time is just create some number here and let's just give it a value, something like one here. And then I'll do if, and let's go ahead and test if this number is equal to one here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do this. And let's just go ahead and put in our scope here. I'll write out one equal to number, just like we've normally been doing. And again, let's just go ahead and test this and it works here. Now, something that I learned long ago in programming, which was very useful to me, is to put this number here on the right side. Because if I'm testing some condition here, I won't accidentally use only one equal sign here for assignment. So this is not valid in, say, the C programming language if you do this. You'll get one equals number. It's just a defensive programming technique that you can use. But if I go ahead and try to compile this, you will get an error in D saying assignment cannot be used as a condition, perhaps double equals was met. So you don't have to use these little tricks here. So again, if I did number equals one here on this side, I again get the same error here. So again, if you've been programming in C and C++ and are coming to D, then this is a nice thing that you don't have to worry about mixing up that double equal sign, which can be a terrible bug to sometimes uh, have to track down and find because this technically would always evaluate in, as true. Okay, so that's just a little thing in the D programming language that I think is nice and maybe you didn't know and Hopefully it gives you some value if you're new to the language of just the thoughtfulness that is put into some of these things. 
Okay, so that's the first thing that I want to show you. The next thing that I want to go ahead and show you is how to use switch uh, case statements here in D. So let's go ahead and just leave this number here. And I'll go ahead and write a switch statement here. And when we do a switch, it's on some value here or some expression. And I'll go ahead and put the curly braces. And then we have individual cases that we want to check. So let's just go ahead and check if our number, if it's one here, then we'll just write line here, number is equivalent to one, and then we break. So essentially these lines are going to execute in our case statement. Now, again, normally we would have lots of cases here. Let's just go ahead and see if it's 10 or something. And then I would write line number equals 10. And then I break again. And let's just go ahead and put a default case so we don't have to enumerate every single number. So we could write something like number is you know greater than 10 or perhaps less than uh, zero. And we use the uh, double bars for or. And I'll show you that again uh, in a moment here. And then finally, we have a break here. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if I made any mistakes here. Go ahead and try to compile this. And again, we can see that number is equal to one here. So it executes that case. And let's go ahead and do this to 10 here. And I'll run it here. And again, it'll just execute this case or this block of code. Now, if I omit break here, let's get rid of one of these. And let's change back to one here. So we know it's going to execute this condition. But D, like other programming languages, is going to have that sort of fall through behavior. Well, unless we use a go to case here if that is intended. So again, this is another nasty bug in the D programming language that you don't have to uh, worry about. Because usually when you have a switch case, you're expecting just one of these cases to execute here. Okay, so you have to use a go to case if that was intended. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you how to do the fall through behavior here. Go to case semicolon. And now I can run it and it will fall through both of those cases. So again, this is another really safe feature of the D programming language that I like. And again, it's being explicit because it is easy to forget these little break statements. OK, so that's another sort of bonus um, thing in the D programming language that I really, really like. The other one that I really want to show you is um, this idea that if we have integral types, we can also specify a range here for our cases. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Because again, maybe I want cases one through 10 to you know, do the same or some sort of similar behavior here. And instead of having to enumerate all 10 of these or sort of one of these at a time and then have the fall through behavior of go to case, which falls down to the next one, let's just enable this for everything. So I have case uh, one here with a colon dot dot case 10, the colon here. And then I'm just going to uh, write here uh, something like number is between, you know, some range here inclusive of one to uh, 10 here. Okay, so I'll use the interval notation here and I'll run this here and let's just go ahead and try some numbers. Again, we didn't have something for seven. And if I run this again, it's just executing this case here. And again, this is a really nice thing, I think, of the deep programming language that we have this available. Okay, so that is switch uh, cases. Let me go ahead and just show you a few more things here. Again, D, like many other programming languages, I can say if a number is greater than five and with uh, two ampersands, uh, number is less than, say, 10, then we could, you know, write line in our range and just go ahead and run this. And again, we can use this for uh, our our way to make decisions or to build up some logical statements. Again, both of these conditions have to be true here. Uh, if I only need one of these to be true, then I could do or. So let's go ahead and say if number is less than, uh, I don't know, negative 10 here, uh, then we would still be in our range here. OK, but if both of these are uh, false here, let's go ahead and say if number is less than five or it's less than uh, negative 10, which neither of those are true well, then this doesn't print out. And we can put these expressions in parentheses and form as complicated of expressions uh, that we want to evaluate to see if this condition is true. OK, now one of the other tools that we have here is called a ternary operator, which is sometimes used. 
some folks will use these in return statements or to initialize variables. Um, and I'll just go ahead and show you how to do this. So let's go ahead and just create some variable here. I'm just going to call it truth. And I'm just going to say it's uh, true initially. Okay, so this is just a Boolean type here for truth. Now, what I'm going to do next is just say, hey, let's go ahead and make some uh, decision here. And when I initialize this variable, I'm going to decide based off of some condition here, my truth variable. If it is in fact true, then I'll assign it a value of 99999, okay? And if it's not, then the other value that I'll give it is say uh, minus one or something of that uh, nature here, and then a semicolon, okay? So now this is gonna initialize this variable here based off of this condition here, okay? So this is the ternary expression. This is the part that gets assigned here if it's true. This is the part here that gets assigned if this condition here is false. So let's just go ahead and write out our decision. And we can go ahead and see this here. And we get 999. Let's go ahead and change this to false now. So now we'll take the false path, which should give us negative one here. And indeed it does for our ternary expression. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Again, this should be familiar to folks who, if you use this in, say, the C programming language, um, that we have these things available. Okay, now the last thing I wanna show you is a little bit of a uh, tricky thing, and it might deserve its own video. So if you want, I can uh, just comment below if you're interested in that, and I can go ahead and put this forward. Uh, but I wanna go ahead and show you just something to be wary about with doing comparisons with if and else. So let's just go ahead and say that we have uh, some value here. And I'm gonna go ahead and assign it to uh, value five, uh, or actually negative five, because this is an integer, right? Its range could be negative or positive. But what if I create a unsigned integer here, and I'll just call it value two, and let's just go ahead and assign it to uh, the value one here. Okay, so we'll try something like this. Now let's just go ahead and compare this integer, which allows for assigned values, and this unsigned value here. So if uh, let's check if the value is greater than our second value. And even uh, just to make this more uh, explicit here, sorry, let's just go ahead and create this as negative uh, value. And this one will be uh, positive, okay? So let's just check if our uh, negative value is greater than our positive uh, value, okay? Uh, and I'll write line here, which is going to be a little bit backwards here, but negative is greater than positive. If this ever was to be true, let's go ahead and run it. And it indeed does print out, okay? Uh, so this is something we still have to be careful about in the D programming language. Now there are different ways we could convert these types, say to uh, floats or something, um, or we could use, there's a checked int package that we could use, convert things to float. And then we'd also have to be wary about overflow issues. Uh, but this more has to do with an issue of unsigned versus signed comparisons. So sometimes we still have to be careful with the types that we have. And there's different types of introspection that we could do to check that these are the same types before comparing them, for instance. Again, these are just some things that we can do indeed to give us these tools, but we still have to be careful sometimes with our comparisons. So I just wanted to leave you with that. If that's something that, that's of interest that you want to see more of, how you fix this or deal with this in D or with some tooling, let me know in the comments below and we can go ahead and proceed for it. All right, folks, so with that said, I hope this is a nice introduction to control flow. We learned some nice things about the D programming language, how it improves on other languages with doing um, tests for our qualities, not letting us do assignment. We learned about if, else if, uh, else statements, the switch case uh, statements, how to enable fall through behavior if we like, how to have uh, ranges, uh, integral ranges that is in our case statements, and then the ternary expression. So this is quite a jam packed video. Go ahead and practice on your own to make sure that you understand these things. And with that said, we'll go ahead and see you in the next lesson, folks. And I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for your time.